Ms. Sunshali. Mr. Speaker, recently a resident came to see me at MPS describing his experience when he went to apply for a license. He could not speak English and apparently the staff at the counter did not understand him and told him to stand aside while they served others. Eventually, he said, they told him to leave. Over and over, the resident described to me his encounter. How he felt the counter staff looked down on him. How others in the queue became aware of his inability to speak English. I explained to my resident that I would write an appeal for him with regards to his license application. But over and over, he continued to describe his encounter to me. He could not stop. Every look he thought he saw, every tone he thought he heard, every slight he felt. His dignity, Mr. Speaker, had been hurt. I thought back about the President's speech. We have programs to build a fair and just society. I welcome and support these programs. But to my resident whose dignity had been hurt, what is a fair and just society? We are all born with a sense of dignity. Some describe dignity as a sense of being valued, a feeling of being respected, a sensation of esteem, of self-worth. It is tied to our self-identity, to the things that matter to us, and is reinforced daily by how others react to us. When our dignity is maintained and our self-worth reinforced through words or deeds, we are at peace with ourselves and with society. When our dignity is threatened and our self-worth questioned, we may react in anger against those who look down on us. We may also become depressed or demotivated. I would say that how we recognize each other's needs for dignity and protect it has implications for how fair and just our society is perceived to be and for social harmony. To achieve a sense of fairness and justness, government policies which preserve meritocracy, equality and promote self-help are important. To a large extent, our government policies strive to create equality in our society by making sure that all citizens have access to education, medical care, basic home ownership and jobs. This allows everyone to have the basics to live a life with dignity. And even for those who drop out or have fallen behind, there are government schemes to provide them an opportunity to get back on again. For instance, we have the Fresh Start Housing Scheme, which aims to help second-timer families with children and who live in public rental flats own a flat again. And should new gaps appear in society, government policies will be looked at again to deal with new issues and new inequalities which may come about. But apart from good policies which strive to create equality, we should also be mindful of the processes and social interactions which can affect an individual's sense of dignity. For example, when the vulnerable and the needy go to government agencies for help, are our processes sensitive to their needs? Do we make them feel that they are valued citizens, albeit they need help at this juncture? Are we mindful of the constraints that they face? I believe that every time a citizen comes forward to seek help is a moment in his life where we could help effect change, a moment where we could try to right life's inequalities, a moment where we could make an individual feel that he is respected and valued, regardless his station in life. These are moments where we can uplift our citizens and show that we are a caring society. I subsequently met the same resident I mentioned earlier, a month later, at a block visit. He shared with me happily that his license application had been approved. I may never know the exact details of his original encounter, 
Nevertheless, it seemed to me to be quite a straightforward application. So the unhappy incident could have been due to a breakdown in communication arising from language difficulties. This episode taught me that in our interactions with our fellow men, we need to put ourselves in their shoes, speak the language they speak, consider the options put to them through their worldview. Sometimes it is not so much what we do, but how we do it that matters. But creating an environment where people feel that they are respected and their sense of dignity is upheld is not just the role of the government. The Prime Minister, in his speech on Wednesday, spoke about social cues and social markers. That they become ways to pigeonhole or exclude others, knowingly or unknowingly. And this is where each of us can play a role. That we not become a perpetrator of such social markers. Instead, we should treat those around us, our fellow men, with mutual respect and compassion. It is only when mutual respect becomes part of our bigger culture that we can be assured that every citizen feels valued and respected just being part of our society. For instance, in our everyday interactions, when we come across service staff, a cleaner, a waiter, do we acknowledge their presence, smile at them and thank them for their work? When we walk into a shop, are we considerate to the shop assistants? This goes beyond superficial manners. It is genuine respect for someone else's work and consideration for someone else's dignity. And to our young, do we show them through our words and our actions that we value them regardless what school they go to, how well they do in school, and that we respect them as multi-dimensional individuals with various different potentials. When we have compassion and mutual respect for our fellow men, and we demonstrate it through our words and our deeds, we uphold their dignity and we make a statement about what we hold dear in our society. That regardless what life has in store for individuals and its infinitely varied and unequal economic outcomes, everyone has a place in Singapore society. No one is any less equal. And when we respect each other and treat each other with civility and dignity, this mutuality of respect becomes a powerful anchoring force providing assurance to every individual that he is loved and accepted. And this brings people close together because they know that they are accepted, come what may. And this is the antithesis to social markers which serve to divide and to differentiate. Mr. Speaker, there are uncertain times ahead with global trade being threatened and our economy undergoing economic restructuring. There will be new winners and new losers in a new paradigm. Inequality can become a serious issue and social stratification can break the social compact in Singapore. Amidst this tidal wave of change, individuals will be seeking new anchors to preserve their worldview and their sense of self-worth as jobs are disrupted and skills have to be relearned. How we manage this transition together and how we help others around us will be a true mark of our compassion to our fellow men and our resilience as a nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In Chinese, please. Yi Zhang Xianxiang, Zuijin, Wo Zai Jie Jian Min Zhong, Zuo MPS De Shi Hou, Yi Wei Ju Min, Wang Xianxiang, Zhao Le Wo. Wang Xianxiang Shuo, Ta Qian Yi Duan, 申请某项执照的时候，有一段不愉快的经历。王先生说，由于他不讲英语，柜台的办公人员不明白他的意思，就叫他站在一边等着，并开始接待其他居民。后来还劝他离开。王先生一遍一遍地叙述整个过程，一直无法释怀。他觉得办公人员看不起他，他也觉得周边的人因为知道了他不会讲英文而开始瞧不起他，他感觉很没有面子。我虽然无法确认办公人员当时的态度究竟如何
，但在王先生看来，当时周围人的表情、眼神，都让他的尊严受到了伤害。议长先生，什么是尊严？有人说，尊严，尊严是一种被人尊重、受人重视的感觉，是自尊和自我价值的体现。在一个社会里，只有当每个人的尊严都得到保护。大家才会有归属感，整个社会才会有凝聚力。新加坡建国五十多年来，很多大家普遍称赞的政策，都是照顾到居民的生存尊严的。例如，政府祖屋政策、保健储蓄政策、婴儿花红政策等等。在新时代的关口，保护个人的尊严尤为重要。当今。新加坡经济正面对着国际贸易战的潜在威胁，还面对着经济结构性的调整。在变革的浪潮中，很多职业将会被颠覆，将会产生新的赢家和新的输家。在这个时候，新加坡人更需要有精神支柱和心灵寄托。在面对成败荣辱的时候，我们是否还能保持积极乐观的心态？我们是否还能保持自信和勇气？我想，这需要我们的社会更具有更强的包容性。这几天，部长和议员们谈到了社会中存在的不平等问题。解决社会中存在的不平等，当然需要政府政策的帮助。但是，我们要意识到，不平等往往也是一种感觉。即使有了政策的帮助，如果人与人之间不互相尊重，也不会感受到真正的平等。回到刚才王先生的经历，后来我得知他的申请很快就获批了。实际上，他的申请其实是一个很简单的程序。之前的不愉快，估计只是沟通中产生的误会。有的时候。我们说的某一句话、某一个肢体语言，都有可能对别人产生深远的影响，可能让他感受到尊严，也有可能让他感觉这个社会不公平。在与居民的沟通和互动中，如果我们能更加重视细节，对彼此的需要更加敏感，也许就不会产生不必要的误会。每一次与居民的接触。其实都是一次宝贵的机会，一次帮助他的机会，一次纠正他生活中感觉不平衡的机会，甚至是改变他一生的机会。因此，我们要珍惜每次与居民的接触机会，在细节上努力，让居民们切身体会到我们是一个有人情味的国家。同时，如果我们每个人，无论来自什么背景，无论种族、宗教、语言，如果我们都能有足够的文化自信，都能为彼此留一些空间，那么我们就能感受到，这是一个平等包容的社会。议长先生，对于每一个正面临困难的居民，我想对他说：，也许我无法切身体会你所经历的痛苦。也许我无法完全理解你曾经做出的选择，但我永远尊重你。让我倾听你的心声，让我帮助你，我们携手一同前进。谢谢。